to be up there. That's the man that to be saying that they have to eat it up. They say that our fish traps are 100,000 year old. Some say they're 90,000 year old, 80,000 year old, 70,000 year old, 60, 40,000 years old. But different archaeologists, they're the ones that come through and say that's their opinion that our fish traps is one of the oldest man made structures. To our old people, the fish traps are timeless. share this with you. In the old times here, in our time, in the old time, our place here was known as a meeting place, a gathering place, a sharing place at our fish traps. Our place in this new time that we now live in, our place is now known for its ancient fish traps, a meeting place, a gathering place, a sharing place for all the different tribes. So when we do tools with people, we teach them all about how our people, those eight different tribes that spoke eight different languages, where they built the fish traps. They came together. Come together like your old people did. And you will build structures, you will build friendships, you will build education, you will build language, you will build peace by all coming together. And our old people set an example for that thousands of years ago. We have a very real opportunity of laying claim to a rather respectable cultural bragging right. Research and education around pivotal points like this is essential to solving our cultural puzzle. There is no dispute that there is pride to be found in the well-known stories of a recent Australia. Those tough enough to run knowingly to their deaths at Gallipoli, yet kind and understanding enough to play a game of cricket with their so-called enemy. Ned Kelly, our lifesavers, and the endlessly courageous men and women who are our fireys. I think it's pretty safe to say that we are a hearty mob. It doesn't stop there. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at the skies. He was one of those black doctor, Doctor Billy Allen. Mm -hmm. Travelled anywhere, mate. Once you got your skies, they can't touch you. Yeah. yeah. He was born in 1840 at Waterloo in a rocky camp, and he buried out the old mission here in 1910. My father moved over the other side of the river there, just up in the fish traps. Yeah. In 1948. 
I would like water with down the man. <laughs> Mammy and Mrs. Red, I pull up kids on a single weight. You wouldn't rear a cat and a dog up on a single weight today. Right? No way. Top at them. The other one rose. You know, like these hot days we're getting there. You have a road in my tire patch. You got a little, little two wheel tire spray up we had. Right? And the spray bar, you're there spraying around and that. The flies are getting up in your nose and your ears. Right? And you can't do it, you've got tire spray there. <laughs> you've got the both ways, tire patch. My son from the head of the Richmond Road. Hey, I work on this road from me to Burton, right? The road from me to Walton. The road from me to the desert. The road from me to Tell the Road. Down the top end. 20 years of road construction. So I can build a ride as good or better than that. Fishnets and that, it went better than what they had in Europe and that. That's canoes with, where they cut them out of trees. And uh, another big one there. Look at the size of this one here. Look. They look night time fishing. Whoa. <laughs> see, the, fish. see the fire? Hey. Yeah. Hey. On the boats. Yeah, well, they put mud in there and light the fire on the mud so they wouldn't burn a hole in the boat. Now, here, look. Grinding holes. Well, they'd be grinding grass seed and making stone tools. They're over the other side there. About three foot of mud on them now. Covered over. Disgrace. That is a lot of grinding. Yeah, yeah. To make that. Yeah, well, look at the size of it. That's huge. It is one, two, three. And they're close to water, see? Water's only about 18 inches away from it. The tour's never about me, but it's about all of my old people before me. 
one of the young people that'll come after me. And also anywhere in between that space, I'll go on. So you coming in for your doco, want to know about our stuff, my duty is to make you feel welcome, make you feel a part of this place. Because our old people, that's what they've done with each other, made each other feel welcome. On these flat banks of our fish traps, our people, um, did their crobbery, did their ceremony, did their dance, did they get together? They all came here and they shared with each other. And see our river like our blood. We lose our blood, we die. We lose our river, we die. That's how powerful the river is. Now these ones here, they're the storage tanks. So our people would catch them and that's where they'd store them. Now smart enough, if that wasn't smart enough, I should say, if our people worked away to catch fish, store fish, but our people left all that space in the river there where fish can still keep swimming upstream to breed, to spawn. That's sustainability at its best level. So roughly 30 to 40% of the fish would be caught and stored. The other 60 to 70% would swim upstream to breed, to spawn. Sustainability at its best level. Now, what's another powerful thing about our area is it throws a modern way of thinking of out about our people. It throws the people's way of thinking. Now here, where we're just straight down here, probably about 100 metres from where we're standing, it proves our people, fish farmers, river environmentalists, water environmentalists, great agriculture. Well, now here, within a 70k distance, straight out here at a place called Cuddy Springs, they find these grinding stones. And on these grinding stones, archaeologists believe, their opinion, that when they found those grinding stones, on those grinding stones, where our people used to grind up the kangaroo grass. Now, they grind up the kangaroo grass to make 100% healthy bread, healthy flour. So our people were more than fish farmers. They were, you know, water environmentalists and also bakers. And potentially the very first bakers in the world, right? Yeah. That's believed to be one of the oldest bakeries just out here. Which, if you think about it, it's kind of funny because then that would make Aboriginals the inventor of sliced bread. Mm. Yet yeah, Aboriginal, they, our white history that's dismissed yeah. so much of that information. Yeah. But yeah. it's so critical yeah. in that there's a lot of pride for like me. Just I'm just a simple little white yeah. guy trying to find my way in Australian culture. Mm. And you've done all right so far. Don't you? <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, well I'm, it's because I'm finding that there's yeah. a lot more culture than. Mm a British culture in yeah. a land that's not Britain. Yeah. But there is hundreds of thousands of years worth of stories from mm. an Aboriginal culture that does know this land and mm. does know how it operates. Mm. And when, you know, Australia is known for being so beautiful and that was because it was so well maintained, it seems, well, by after. Aboriginal people and we've just come in and destroyed it. Yeah. And the perfect example is like these traps. We have... There was such a beautiful thing and people yeah. just came in without even thinking and started taking stones away and love. Now take a look at this picture behind us, right? Mm -hmm. This photo was taken in the late eighteen hundreds in a dry period. Now in this dry period, how people are catching fish, storing fish, fish have a ways to swim upstream to breed the spawn in a dry period in the eighteen hundreds. Look how dry the banks are in that photo. That's in the late 1800s. Now, that's in a dry period in the 1800s. So we say before cotton, come and look at this model. Before cotton, after cotton, that's how the fish traps look now. So during the mid 60s, they blew a lot of our fish traps up here because that vision's like Americans to hold more water back and grow cotton. Now, of between between Brewana and South East Queensland, where all our river comes I'm from, the shadow, sorry. where all our river comes from, um, you know, there are hundreds of different cotton dams between here and South East Queensland, where all our river comes from. And you know, four to six of those hold 24, 25 times more water than Sydney Harbour. That's why our rivers look, that's why our fish traps are downstream, and a lot of our rivers are looking dry like that. The only place though, in our whole area, that's got a lot of water, is from that point there to 60 kilometres upstream. That's the only place in our whole area that's got a real lot of water. 
And that's because they've installed the wind out of, but it's not stopping, it's no, not creating the, any natural The natural flow. rock, the natural rock there now, that's all the natural rock behind that wheel. Yeah. That's what's holding more of it back. Yeah. And not only that, because they're deep water rocks all along. They're deep, it's a deep river. That's what's keeping it. Okay. You look at a lot of the landscape here, it hasn't got that rock in it. And same as it hasn't got ochre in it, down further. And you see in this area where the river is, you've got your, all your different colour soils. You've got your black soil, you go straight in here, you've got your red soil, and also your white, all your different white dirts out this way. So the landscape in this area is, is, is unreal. Kind of like a huge shopping market. Yeah. Turns out we're not the youthful baby society so many consider us to be. We are one of the oldest and most sustainable cultures known to our planet.